And welcome to the next presentation at the NWR Communications Resources Day. Uh, the next company to present is Great Northern Minerals, which is an ASX listed gold focused explorer. The company's key projects, uh, gold projects are in North Queensland, uh, where mining uh, ceased production around the 19, in the early 1990s, with over 150,000 ounces previously produced. Uh, today we have Simon Coxall presenting. Simon is the technical director for Great Northern Minerals. And Simon, uh, we look forward to uh, the, the update on the company, over to you. Okay, um, thank you very much. And it's my pleasure to be presenting today and um, giving you the Great Northern Minerals story, which I'm, I'm sure you'll find very interesting. Just by way of introduction and background, um, Great Northern Minerals um, has three gold projects located within approximately 250 kilometres of Townsville. Uh, we're based around the mining centre of Greenvale and located literally halfway between Kidston, Charters Towers and Pajingo. So it's a, great, um, it's a great address. We own 11 granted mining leases and have secured the um, surrounding exploration permits there. So we think we've got all the ground covered. The important thing about these projects is that they were all previously mined in the 1980s and early 1990s by simple open cut methods. Uh, we're not exploring nebulous targets, we're effectively drilling underneath known gold deposits. The previous operators were privately owned and mined a large number of open pits and effectively heat bleached that ore to produce the gold. So we're now exploring underneath those uh, gold systems. Just a bit on the corporate snapshot, we've got a very experienced board of directors. Um, chairman Kim, Kim Robinson, he was previously the chairman of Kagara that developed a number of gold and base metal operations um, in North Queensland. Managing director Cameron McLean is an experienced finance and mining executive who introduced these projects to Great Northern approximately 12 months ago. I'm a geologist. I've been involved in um, exploration development and mining of gold projects for about 35 years um, with the majority of that work in Western Australia. Our other director is Simon Peters. Now Simon's a mining engineer. So we believe we've got all the, um, all the expertise required to advance and develop these projects. Um, in terms of the company structure, we've got 900 million shares on issue, market cap of about $14 million, $1.4 million in cash, and the stock's currently trading at 1.8 cents. It's been up to 2.5, and we think that uh, as we go forward advancing these projects, we're going to see um, continuous growth. As I said at the start, the key to these projects is previously mined open pits whereby the soft oxide material was mined and heat bleached to produce in the order of 150,000 ounces. Um, most of these open pits were developed between about 15 metres and 30 metres uh, vertical depth, targeting principally the soft uh, oxide resource. So the plan going forward uh, for Great Northern, and we've drilled 9,000 metres of drilling this year, is to uh, demonstrate that the gold mineralisation in all of our three projects continues um, at depth. And so far, that's certainly what we've found. Um, based on the previous mining that's been completed, if you consider two and a half million tonnes in the top 30 metres over the three gold projects, um, we don't think it's a stretch um, to extrapolate that down to 100 metres or 200 metres and define substantial gold resources within our projects. Um, there is potential um, toll treating options um, within our projects and in, in um, uh, transport to those. However, our aim is really to uh, develop substantial gold resources that we can uh, mine and process ourselves. Just a little bit of background on the geology. As I say, we're halfway between Kidston and Charters Towers. Um, all of our projects are located within very tightly folded sequence of um, uh, sedimentary rocks, um, sandstones and siltstones. And where those rocks are tightly folded um, is the development of what's called axial planar faults. Now those axial planar faults, which are focused largely on the contact zones between the various lithologies, is effectively the conduits for that gold mineralisation to be introduced in the system. 
And what we see associated with the gold is an increase in quartz veining and an increase in sulphide uh, development, principally in the primary rocks. The oxide rocks, the um, sulphides have been uh, oxidized. I mentioned that we had uh, 11 mining leases. Uh, they're all granted and uh, subsequent to securing those uh, late last year, we've now uh, secured all the surrounding expiration permits. So we believe that uh, all the upside in terms of extensions to the gold mineralisation is covered by our tenure. So we think that puts us in a very um, strong position. Big Rush is the project that we've just recently completed a substantial drilling program, 20 holes for in the order of 4,000 metres. The aim of this drilling was to drill underneath the existing mined open pits and to demonstrate that the mineralisation uh, continues at depth. Uh, that's been very successful. Every single drill hole intersected the targeted structure. You can see the calibre on the, of some of the intersections on the slide there, 24 metres at four, 32 metres at 3.89. Um, the existing open pits at Big Rush extend over approximately 2.2 kilometres of strike um, and our recent program effectively tested underneath uh, three of those um, previously mined open pits. Um, just a couple of slides here to illustrate in additional detail what Big Rush looks like. The slide on the left is an aerial imagery that shows the, um, the southern pit to the south, the central pit and the northern pit. Our drilling was completed on 40 to 50 metre centres, one or two holes per section um, to basically uh, test for extensions to the known mineralisation underneath the open pits. Um, all of those, um, all of that drilling was very successful with a large number of notable um, economic, potentially economic intersections. On top of that, we've recently um, completed four diamond holes underneath the central open pit. Those diamond holes have been designed to intersect the structure at approximately 230, 240 metres below surface. Um, that drilling's just been completed and the, um, uh, the core samples have been cut and submitted to the uh, laboratory in Townsville. Um, we're expecting results for that in the next two or three weeks. All the drilling companies and labs virtually around Australia are under the pump at the moment because um, the gold price is where it is, but we're anticipating those results uh, before Christmas. Um, just a little bit more summary of the drill results from underneath Big Rush. We've had a number of very high grade uh, intersections um, contained within our broader um, medium grade intersections, three metres at 21, four metres at 20, best was a metre at 81, which had some visible gold, which we found was uh, very encouraging. Um, so Big Rush is one of our gold systems, and I'll now um, turn to Camel Creek, which we're very excited about. I've got a brief video that I'd like to share with you that I hope won't be too stuttered, but it'll give you a very good introduction to Camel Creek, and then we can get into some additional detail. I hope that came through um, reasonably well. And now for a little bit more detail, what the video really highlighted, and that was taken during our recent drilling, we completed 18 holes for approximately two and a half thousand metres at um, Camel Creek. And we focused principally on a 700 metre uh, area of strike length. 
And that was really to uh, test for and to demonstrate continuity underneath the existing uh, open pits. Um, those open pits extend for approximately 3.5 kilometres. And, you know, geologists have got a bit of a rule of thumb that says you divide the strike length by a factor of four to get the vertical extent of the mineralisation. So we believe that ultimately the Camel Creek mineralised system may extend down to 500 metres. We've obviously got a lot of work to demonstrate that and to prove that and confirm that, but nonetheless, the drilling that we completed, which was the deeper drilling, deepest drilling ever completed at Camel Creek, validated our hypothesis and confirmed what we were uh, hoping for. The slide that you can see there is showing all the anomalous gold results above one gram. The vast majority of those dots that you can see there in terms of the color coded dots is related to um, shallow grade control drilling that the previous private operators had used for the mining. Um, our, our drilling, again, very similar to Big Rush, no dusters, every single uh, drill hole intersected the structure with some notable intersections. Again, just to highlight those intersections, um, some very good ones there, 24 metres at 3.2, um, 8 metres at 2.6, 12 metres at 4, but basically the mineralisation that was mined within these open pits extends to depth and our job now is to um, extend that, complete additional drilling and to um, establish a substantial Jork 2012 gold resource. A little bit more detail about the drilling that we completed. Uh, the slide on the left again is an aerial imagery. It shows the drilling that we completed, which again was uh, on nominal 40 metre centres. And the important thing about that drilling is it identified um, two main trends and where they intersect, there's been um, no drilling. We've called that the hinge zone target and we think it's where um, there's very tightly sediments that have formed uh, plunging folds. And that's really the focus for a drilling program that we're planning to kick off in the first week of December um, in effectively two weeks. So we've got a drill rig lined up, um, we've got personnel lined up and we're looking forward to commencing that um, this year. The other thing that we've been doing is we've engaged CSA Global um, here in Western Australia to compile all of the previous historic data, and that's been extremely useful. Um, historic data is of high value if you can um, get that um, into the format that you can then utilise, and certainly that's what we've been doing. Now that work has identified a series of plunging ore shoots and they now require deeper drilling to test for and extend. The slide on the right is drilling that we've recently conducted, the drilling we um, kicked off um, at Camel Creek. And what's very interesting about that is that you'll see that whole CCRC 11 on the right there, it intersected eight metres at 0.5, um, which was encouraging, but we had a, a great deal of alteration on either side of that. We then decided on the basis of that to drill um, two deeper holes to scissor, to effectively scissor that to understand the orientation of it. And it's confirmed our interpretation of subvertical myelinite hosted shear zones containing um, good grades of gold mineralisation. Golden Cup is our third gold project, which is located spatially quite close to Camel Creek and we see good potential at developing Golden Cup in conjunction with Camel Creek. Um, the drilling that we completed there was in December 2019, uh, very soon after securing the option of these um, mining leases. And I'll just make the point that with these mining leases, we now own 100% of those. We paid half the price because the vendor needed some money and there's no royalties attached. So that puts us in very good standing. Um, again, seven metres at 7.5, nine metres at 4.72 at Golden Cup, and a lot of uh, upside there. Again, Golden Cup's personified by a series of uh, very shallow open pits down to about 20 metres, 15 metres vertical depth. The ore was mined, soft oxide ore was mined, heat leached, and the gold um, extracted. Just a couple of uh, cross sections of Golden Cup to illustrate the calibre of some of the um, intersections returned. 
15 metres at 4.8, 19 metres at 3.7. And what we've been able to do with the um, 1,000 metres of drilling we uh, completed at Golden Cup was to complete very detailed geological interpretation. And that really provided uh, very strong support to our understanding on the controls of the gold mineralisation in terms of axial planar shear zones focused on those fold closures and the contact zones between the um, sandstones, which are more brittle units, and the shales and siltstones, which are more ductile. And that's where the gold has deposited. Just a little bit of an overview before and um, possibly some um, additional detail. Um, the company's come a long way in the last 12 months. The board's been significantly upgraded. Uh, we've acquired these projects 100%. And as I say, there's been no royalties associated with it. The plan going forward, um, receipt of the diamond drilling results underneath Big Rush, air core drilling at Camel Creek, we also envisage a very large RC program to really expand and test um, down to 150, possibly 200 metres underneath Camel Creek. And all that work will lead to uh, Jork 2012 estimates um, for all of the deposits, uh, further RC drilling at the projects. And once we've, we've completed that work, um, examined that diamond core, completed metallurgical test work, we're then in a position to finalise and validate the scoping studies, um, which will uh, demonstrate the economic parameters of the project. So that, that's in, um, it in a nutshell. They say that the best place to um, find new gold deposits in, is in sight of the head frame. And that's certainly what we've been focusing on with a great deal of uh, success. I think these projects have got a long way to go with our future work that is in um, well advanced. And I guess I look forward to in the coming months updating, uh, updating you and the ASX on the results. Um, so that's, that's great Northern. Um, in, in summary, I'd welcome your questions um, in, in additional detail. Thanks Simon. Um, excellent uh, update on the company and you've obviously had some real success with the, uh, with the recent uh, uh, drilling programs that you've been undertaking. The, um, just a, a question we've got in is, is around you know, how did you manage to sort of pick up these assets? They look like terrific assets. You say find gold where there is gold and under under old gold mines. Um, how why did they sit there for so long? How were you able to do the deals to pick these up? Um, well, as I say, these projects have always been held in private hands, and effectively, um, uh, during the 1980s and early 1990s, the project were um, owned by a private earth moving company and mining company called Lynch Mining. Um, they mined the two and a half million tonnes of two grams and produced about 150,000 ounces uh, by heat bleaching methods. Um, after that, the projects were then sold to um, a group called Curtin Brothers, um, headed by Sir Michael Curtin, who again were earth moving contractors who did a lot of work in uh, New Guinea building ports. They completed um, effectively uh, limited exploration, data compilation, but never went back to mining. Um, the gold price was different. And then Sir Michael Curtin died. So these projects have been held in estate effectively for the last five years prior to uh, Cameron McLean securing the projects. So as the gold price has been um, increasing and there's been more focus on ASX listed gold prices, um, these projects were going nowhere. So, you know, timing's, uh, timing's obviously uh, very important, and that's how we've been able to secure those projects. And as I say, first time uh, a funded ASX listed company has got them. The previous operator simply focused on mining and not exploration, and we're now focused on exploration and development. Thanks, Simon. You talked a little bit about, particularly with Camel Creek, the, the strike extent, uh, and the consistent grades that you're hitting um, below the old pits. I mean, you did talk about the rules of thumb, you know, the, the quarter, so they're down to 500 metres. Do you expect the, the grade consistency to continue or do you expect the variation, um, you yeah, know, with depth? It's probably very hard to tell, I'd imagine, at this early stage. 
Um, it is hard to tell, but you know, these deposits are three dimensional in nature. And what I may just quickly do, and I think we've probably got time, I'll just stop sharing this screen and then share another screen with you. Just bear with me. And I've got a program called Micromine, which puts all the data in three dimensions. And we can just very quickly have a look at that, which might give you a, a better feel for where we're going. So just bear with me, I'll just share the screen again. Okay, so I'm hoping you can see a different screen in terms of not a PowerPoint and additional data. An aerial imagery with the extent of the drilling uh, plotted on that. Can you see that there? Yes, we can, Simon. Okay, excellent. Well, this also highlights the drilling that we recently completed. And what we're able to do with this data, as I say, this is the new validated data that we've had CSA Global assist us with. But we're now in a position where we can have a look at these assays. And for, for example, we can say that the, um, the gold grade is greater than equal to say two grams per tonne. And then you can see that the distribution of the anomalous gold grades extend throughout the entire uh, strike length. If we then get into a little bit more detail with that, we can do a similar thing and we can say, okay, well, what about the distribution of the higher grades plus five grams? Five grams today is worth about $400 um, a tonne. And again, you can see the extent of those uh, high grade gold grades. So I'll just put it back to, um, I'll just put it back to plus one gram. And then I can just show you in a little bit more detail quite quickly, um, the drilling that we complete. And you can, rather than seeing cartoons on the PowerPoint, we can actually um, zoom into our, our drilling and have a good close look at it. So the cartoon that we had up, um, previously was holes 11 and 12 and 15. So I can cut a section through that now. We see the topographic surface that's been, uh, we have a very accurate digital terrain model of that. And as I say, the hole 11, you know, some intersections there of interest, but a lot of, lot of um, alteration. We then drilled hole 12. You can see the caliber of those grades, 18, sixes, fives, and another parallel zone down here. We then thought, well, we need to confirm what the orientation of that mineralization is. So we came back the other way with a scissor hole and again, intersected that structure where we thought we would, 10 grams, 15 grams. And so we really understand what the orientation of those zones um, are. The other thing that we can do is we can pull up a, a long section so effectively, we're pulling all of this data onto one, one plane, if you like. So just bear with me while I do that. And this is very, this is very interesting and what I, I think really gives us um, a lot of excitement. Again, all the shallow work related to the mining of these deposits. Um, this is the drilling that we have uh, completed at depth through here. Again, good numbers there. This was the cross section just here that I showed you in more detail. We then tested that further to the um, south with hole 16. We got the structure. We then intersected that with hole 17, got the structure. And you can see further to the south, there's just been no testing whatsoever. And at depth, there's been nothing. So it's really a matter of now drilling at depth underneath these pits and demonstrating that the mineralization continues. And that's really the aim uh, going forward of the company. Yeah, it certainly shows it very well, Simon. Thanks very much for that. Probably in the interest of time, uh, we'll have to wrap it up there, but thank you very much to Simon and the team from, uh, from Great Northern for the presentation today. Thank you, Simon. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity.